You're standing in a long queue when suddenly the doors open and you enter the performance hall to take your seat. Nothing seems strange or different. Soon everyone is seated, quietly waiting to hear their favorite Beethoven symphony performed live. A round of applause begins when the orchestra players enter onto the stage. Suddenly, rising out of the center of the stage appears a humanoid robot with a conductor stick in his hand. All, uh, that's when you notice that all the music stands are missing and all the orchestra players are wearing a, the same pair of special glasses. The robot conductor signals to begin the symphony. His hand actions are perfectly emotive, expressing the fortissimo great strength. Surely enough, you hear no page turning noise in the midst of the beautiful piece. The players are able to read the music straight off of the screens of their glasses. As the piece gets closer and closer to its climax, you notice that all the percussion instruments are missing, but the percussionist is still standing on stage. Just when you fear that the massive climax is going to be missing, the percussionist goes... We live in a world of massive, rapid, and even disruptive technological change. Consider today something as simple as a mobile phone has so many applications. Think, oh, think about how far we've grown over the past 40 or 50 years, and more so to even just the last decade. Today, we, uh, we have notation software that allow us to input our notation on the computer and listen to it and preview it iPods allow us to listen to our music whenever and wherever we want. Digital audio software allow us to record and edit sounds from the real world. What do these all have in common? All of these innovations are technologically based. And innovation in technology is met with an equal innovation in music. Electrical circuits were developed, and the amplifier was invented and matched with synthesizers and electric instruments. The computer was invented and matched with audio software and virtual instruments. But first, let's look back a couple of centuries. Those great music composers were required to meticulously handwrite pages and pages of score without making so much as a single mistake. Pieces could only be heard when performed live, not at any other time, because the instruments required to be physically present. Today's music consists of a versatile mix of natural and artificial, acoustic and electric sounds. Producers and artists assemble sounds on stage, yet the instruments need not be physically present. This, they have in their hands the ability to assemble any kind of sound or any kind of rhythm that they want. This live assembly is done utilizing MIDI virtual instruments, which are computer-generated sounds. These instruments can either uh, reflect sounds of real instruments, such as pianos, violins, or they can have their own electronic type of sound, such as the synthesizers that we hear in modern music. With this, the composer has at his fingertips access to sounds of any instruments of any kind from all parts of the world. Example of the notations. So, but one thing has not changed, and that is the system of classical music notation. At heart, it has remained the same. But the way that we view it, the way that we perceive it has changed. Today, computer notation software like this allows us to input the notes onto the computer, listen to the playback of the piece, see what it sounds like. Any mistake, halfway through the piece, wish to add a new instrument, wish to print out 100 copies of the piece, click, and it's done. But what is the future of music? I opened up with an anecdote of a, piece, of a dream that I once had, a dream about robots facilitating the live performance of music by real musicians. When the, <clears throat> there was a robot conductor leading the orchestra and a percussionist uh, playing percussion when no instruments were physically present. Let me just give you a better idea of how that happened.
I just performed an electronic piece that I composed using MIDI virtual instruments, a device called the Leap Motion, and an application called Gecko MIDI. The, some of the chords and the notes were prepared before, but the instruments, their sound, their, type, their, their textures were all improvised on the spot. But this, this device right here, this box, is called the Leap Motion. And what it does is it creates, it uses infrared light to generate a 3D environment that can detect the movements of your hands and even individual fingers, whether, whether fast or slow, up or down, forward, backward, left hand or right hand, your movements will be tracked and recognized. Imagine being able to improvise as, as much as you want using just your natural body actions, the sound of percussion, a rising siren, falling waves, the fall of rain, an explosion. The device becomes a catalyst for expression. The musical applications are limitless. Surround sound is a type of sound that is, lies in a two-dimensional plane. It, sound for movies and television is designed to appear as though it's coming from all around us. Just take a moment to appreciate what this really means. Were you able to hear the sounds coming from both sides? Now, imagine what it would be like if, this were, if you were in a place where the sound was emitted in three dimensions, from around you, as well as from above and below. The experience of listening to music becomes much more realistic, a true representation of how we perceive sound in the real world. My love of technology and music propelled me to um, become a Google Glass Explorer. It propelled me to begin writing an application that would allow musicians to read music straight off of the screen of the glass. The application is still in the early stages of development, but there is much further potential for it. For example, it could follow along as the performer is playing, or it could even write the notes that the musician is improvising so that the musician would be able to see all the notes, all the chords that he's playing right on the spot. Another item that I've been working on is um, an electronic notation system. So I, I personally felt the classical system of notation is perfect for acoustic instruments, but I felt that it was insufficient to describe the kinds of sounds that can be electronically generated. And as a result, I decided that I wanted to kind of, you know, kind of create my own system for electronic music. So it's based off of the classical system with a, with a couple of modifications, a couple of additions. So uh, here you can see it follows the same, the standard uh, clef and staff for describing, indicating the different pitches of the notes. But it uses different automation, which describes the changes, the changes in the instruments, the way that they sound. So for example, here you might have volume increasing and then decreasing. You might have the higher sound simply increasing and increasing until the end. Then there are different kinds of instrument effects. So for example, in this case, you could have something echoing, or you could have something distorting, you could have something gliding, you could have something short. And just to give you a better idea of what, how these changes are indicated, I'll be just giving you a couple of demos. So looking at volume. Or even velocity. Or a pitch shift. So that's kind of how this works. And in addition, it contains a two dimensional map, which is also another rep representation of the volumes and the angles of origin of the different kinds of sounds which are indicated. So the volume depends on the distance from the center, and the direction of origin depends on where it's located on the map. So you can see here, instrument number one in the whole system would be the loudest coming from directly in the center. 
Two and three would be equally loud, coming from different sides. Four would be kind of soft, coming from the side. And five would be equally soft, coming from kind of straight ahead. So that's just how the system kind of works. But te complex technology is one of the leading propelling forces of change in simple music. Innovation, but the future of music is just immeasurable. We have innovations and inventions such as the Leap Motion, the Google Glass, that can all be involved in the metamorphosis of music. Each step we take leads us somewhere new. Even seemingly non-music related inventions can in fact have an immense impact on music. Change is simply in the DNA of music. We are the innovators of the next generation. We make the change. Anything that we create, anything, can have, may unintentionally or intentionally have a beneficial impact on the world of music. But today, technology is propelling the change. But tomorrow, who knows? Maybe the universal music will stumble upon some other ally that will allow it to change, to grow, to develop, to evolve. Thank you.